Hey guys, welcome to How to Wire It. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to wire this stuff, this RGB LED strip. Now, this LED strip is the non-addressable type. So, there are a lot of LED strips or controllable LEDs out there that are really data-driven. It's just power and ground and then a data line and you can control each individual LED. This is not that kind of strip. This is the kind of strip that just has all the LEDs in it be a single color. And it's really, it's basically just controlling three separate LEDs. But instead of being 3.3 volt or whatever a lot of LEDs tend to be, the, this is actually 12 volt. So it does require a little bit of extra wiring to make it light up correctly and we can't just power it directly from an Arduino pin. We're actually going to have to use transistors to act as switches from our Arduino controlling the 12 volts going into the strip. So for this project what you need is obviously the LED strip. So this is I believe it's 5050 RGB LED strip and this stuff you can get on Amazon or eBay for a uh, dollar or less per foot. So it's also really cheap when you compare it to the uh, addressable LED strips out there that are potentially 5 or $10 per foot. So let's take a look at the other parts that we need to wire this up. So you're going to need various bits of hookup wire. I have a couple different colors and lengths. You're going to need three NPN transistors. So these are 2N2222 transistors, a very common one, but also 3904 transistors will work as well. Basically any low power uh, NPN BJT transistor. And then you're also going to need three resistors. Now these are 1K resistors, but honestly these are just little current limiting resistors for our transistors. These resistors can be anything between about 220 to 3 or 4K. So it's not super critical the value of your resistors, but just that you have some sort of in that 200 to 2K mark. You will also need a 12 volt power supply. This, I believe, happens to be a 12 volt 2 amp power supply, and I have it wired up to a little uh, breadboard friendly wiring setup here and you will eventually need your computer to program your Arduino and that's the last part the Arduino you're gonna need one of those so really there's not a whole lot of components and in fact the code is also pretty simple for this so let's see if we can just get through this nice and quickly alright so I've come in close on the breadboard so you guys can see it more easily and I have already prepped this little chunk of LED strip here with some header pins to make it easier for me to prototype and test out with this stuff. So I'm just going to pop that into the board right here. And while we're at it, I'm going to take my little power supply so this just plugs right into the jack here. I'm going to take this little guy. And the red wire, which I have wired up to the positive of this, is going to plug into the little 12 volt connector on the LED strip. So the LED strip has four pins. One of them is a 12 volt pin, and the other three are the three colors, R, G, and B. And the black wire here from the little power supply, I'm going to plug into the ground for the whole circuit. Now, it's important to remember that I'm not plugging the positive here into the positive for this circuit because the Arduino here runs at 5 volts and this positive will be 12 volts. Now, in this video, I'm just going to show you guys how to wire up the basic LED strip to the Arduino. Uh, I am not going to show you how to make a single power supply for everything. So, this will be USB powered while the strip will be 12 volt powered. So it's not the most elegant solution. It does mean that you have to have two things plugged in basically for power. But on a lot of Arduinos, the uh, voltage in 
can handle 12 volts. Uh, it just happens that this little guy can't handle 12 volts. But on a lot of your Arduinos, like the Arduino Uno or anything like that, that, that input, that voltage input barrel jack, can be used, I believe, up to 18 or maybe even 20 volts. So in a lot of Arduino scenarios, you actually can plug this power directly in. It just happens that this Arduino here can only accept 5 volts. So now that we have the strip and the power for our strip connected, next part let's jump into is the transistors. So these transistors are NPN BJT transistors and they have three pins. They have on the left with the flat side facing towards you. On the left we have the emitter. On the center we have the base and on the right we have the collector. So emitter, base, collector. And the way that I remember how these pins work is the base is the control pin. This is where you will connect to your Arduino pins to actually flip the power on and off to the strip. So the middle, the base is our control pin. The left pin is the emitter. And the way I remember the emitter from the collector is when working with these, the emitter connects to ground. And so I think of it as power flowing in through the collector and out through the emitter. So it's emitting electrons to ground. Now, yes, in a physics sense, that's totally wrong, but it does make it easy for me to remember. And the collector will eventually connect up to our LED strip here. So we have emitter connected to ground, base, the center pin connected to our Arduino pin, and the right side, the collector, is connected to the LED strip. So I'm going to wire up one of these and show you how one of them goes, and then the other two for the other two colors are going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to do one and walk you guys through it, and then I'm going to do the other two quickly. So I'm going to pop this guy in here. And although I said that you connect the base to the Arduino, we actually are going to connect it via a resistor to the Arduino. So this is acting as a current limiting resistor in a basically the exact same form as a current limiting resistor when you wire a, an LED to the Arduino. It's just preventing the transistor from drawing more current than the Arduino pin can supply. So from the resistor, now that's plugged into the center pin, the base of the transistor. And we have the other side of the resistor. I'm going to plug into pin 5. I happen to know that on this Arduino, that is a PWM capable pin. And I'm going to take a little ground wire here and wire up that emitter, that left hand pin, to ground. And now there's just one connection left to make, which is our connection from the collector to our, I'm going to stick that into the green pin. So the power that flows through the LED strip will come in through this red wire going into the 12 volts, go through whichever color it is, go through red, blue, or green, and then come out this wire, this one happens to be on green, into the collector, and then depending on whether we've switched it on or not, if we've switched it on, it will then flow out through the emitter and into ground. So that completes the circuit from positive all the way to ground. Now, if our Arduino pin is low, then no power will flow through that color and that color will be turned off. Or if we're analog writing, it'll be flashing on and off so quickly that it appears to be dimming. So that's how you wire up one of these. I'm going to go ahead and wire up the rest of them, and then we'll take a look at the code. All 
All right, there we go. Now we have all three transistors, one for red, blue, and green, wired up to our LED strip on the red, blue, and green channels, and up to the Arduino. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the code to make all this run. All right, so here you can see the code for this mood light. And it's really very simple. So at the top, you can see we have three variables, green, blue, and red pin. And those are set equal to the pins that we wired our transistors to. And in setup, we do pin modes for each of those, setting them as outputs. And then loop is just a single function call three times over. So I've created this fade from to function where you give it a pin that you want to fade out of, fade from, and a pin that you want to fade into. So we are going to fade from blue to green. So the way that this function works, it's right here, is it's really, it's just a single for loop. And inside the for loop, we go from 0 to 255, which is the minimum and maximum for our PWM pins. So the first thing that we do is we analog write on our two pin, so that would be our green pin in this first instance. We're going to start fading that from zero, from I, to 255. And then our next thing, we're gonna delay a little bit, and then next we're going to right from our from pin, so that would be our blue pin. And we're going to do a little bit of tricky math here. This basically just inverts whatever the current value of i is. So we happen to know that our maximum is 255, not only from our for loop, but also from our PWM analog write maximum. So if you take, a, if you take your maximum bound and subtract it, from your current value, you actually get an inverted value. So let's just say that i is equal to zero here. Well, 255 minus zero is 255. And one, 255 minus one is 254. So this basically inverts i so that as two is fading up, so as green is fading up, blue starts out at 255 and slowly works its way down to zero. So this simultaneously fades one color up while fading the other color down. It also happens to perfectly make sure that at any given time, the whole strip is at the same total brightness. So what I mean by this is that there will always be a total value of 255 across whatever pins are lit up. So if two here is equal to two, then from would be 255 minus two, 253. So 253 plus two is 255. So it makes sure that the whole thing as it's fading through the colors stays at consistent brightness. So you can see the code here is really, really simple. So Let's go ahead and I'm going to plug in the USB here to my laptop. And the power has already been plugged in on the power strip. So now we can see the lights come on and it's a little bit hard to see in the video, but it's fading through the color wheel now. So blue to green and green going to red now and red going to blue. And it's really easy if you want to change the speed of this. All you have to do is change these two delays right here and here. If you change those two delays, you can speed it up, slow it down, do basically whatever you want. And you have a very simple mood light circuit there. And you can now wire up this kind of strip for whatever project you have. I have a couple of these strips in my house as, as mood lights, as controllable lights. I, I plan to do a video in the future showing how to wire these guys up to an ESP module and uh, control it via Siri through HomeKit so you can actually have controllable multicolor lights in your house 
And this only costs, again, a dollar per foot on the strip. The transistors and all of that, well, probably maybe three or four cents, five cents worth of stuff there. And then whatever your microcontroller is. So if it's a TNT like this, it's $15. But if it's a, uh, an ESP module, that's like $2. So in total, you can build yourself a multicolor mood light for only maybe about $10, $15 at the max. So really, really useful stuff. I show people how to wire this up all the time. It's really quite a simple circuit. So yeah, if you like these videos, you like the How to Wire It series, definitely like this video and definitely subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like it. And you can also find me on Twitter at It Kinda Works Inc. And you can also check out my blog at itkindaworks.com. All right, that's all for now. I'll see you guys later.